Reversing vehicles, control measures. Identify control measures to reduce the risk of accidents from reversing vehicles in the workplace. The control measures to reduce the risk of accidents from reversing vehicles in the workplace include the avoidance of the need for vehicles to reverse by the introduction of one-way systems or drive-in drive-out layout, the separation of vehicles and pedestrians by the erection of barriers and signs, vehicle design including the provision of good visibility, audible alarms, mirrors and sensors, positioning mirrors at blind corners in the workplace and providing refuges, good standards of lighting, procedural measures such as driver and pedestrian training, the use of banksmen, site rules for reversing operations, the use of high visibility clothing by those working in areas where there is vehicle access, Traffic route design features. The warehouse of a food manufacturer is to be redeveloped to enable its storage capacity to be increased as well as to enable the use of internal transport to transfer goods to and from the loading. Bez. A outline the design features of the traffic routes that should be addressed in order to minimize the risk of forklift truck related accidents. B. Describe additional measures that need to be taken to protect pedestrians from the risk of being struck by a forklift truck in the warehouse. Part A. Keep pedestrians and vehicles apart. Separate routes designated crossing places and suitable barriers at recognized danger spots. High visibility clothing to be provided and worn if necessary. Clearly marked and signed traffic routes. Roads, gangways and aisles should have sufficient width clearance for the largest vehicle. Roads, gangways and aisles should have sufficient overhead clearance for the largest vehicle. Speed limits established and enforced. Adequate lighting to be provided. Ensure good all-round visibility. Avoid designing in sharp and or blind bends. Avoid overhead obstructions. The floor surface should be suitable and sufficient for the intended traffic. Floors and traffic routes to be adequately maintained. Gradients should be kept as gentle as possible, not too steep. Suitable and sufficient number of parking areas to be provided and be of the size to sweep the vehicles intended to be parked therein. Avoid reversing if possible. Make people aware of the movement of vehicles. Part B. A segregated system for vehicles and pedestrian traffic. Appropriate roadway and aisle markings. Maintaining a good level of visibility for example mirrors, transparent doors, provision of adequate lighting, audible warning on vehicles. Establishing and enforcing site rules. The provision of refuges to allow vehicle passing if aisles have a restricted width. The wearing of high visibility clothing. Good standards of housekeeping. Training and supervision of all those concerned involved. Enforcing reasonable speed limits. Introducing a pedestrian has the right of way system. Lift trucks using horns when entering the building, approaching blind corners, etc. 
ban on people using mobile phones, which may be a distraction for the work environment. Slip and trip avoidance. Outline the precautionary measures that may be needed to prevent slips and trip hazards in an engineering factory. The condition of the floor road surface. These need to be well maintained, not holes, and kept in a clean condition. Having designated walkways. Having a protected walkway, fencing, barrier, etc. Timely removal of any contamination of the walking surface from spillages and leaks, etc. Ensure that accumulations of debris, stacking of items, etc. that cause obstructions to a walkway are not permitted. The availability of adequate space to undertake the expected task. The environment, lighting levels to be adequate. Noise that may disguise traffic activity to be addressed. Footwear being worn to be suitable and sufficient. Introduction of training of persons so that they are aware of the dangers in the area and the site rules. Provision of warning and reminder signage. Vehicles in the workplace. A identify four ways in which people can be injured by vehicles in the workplace. B. Give ways in which a vehicle driver who has not received adequate training may put the safety of other employees in the workplace at risk. C. Identify issues that should be included in a training program for vehicle drivers in order to reduce the risk of accidents to themselves and other employees. Part A. The most obvious way in which people may be injured by vehicles in a workplace is being struck and knocked down while the vehicle is in motion. 1. Being struck by something falling from a vehicle. 2. Being crushed between a vehicle and a fixed object. 3. Being injured if two vehicles collide. 4. Being trapped if a vehicle overturns. 5. Falling from a vehicle whilst it is in motion and. 6. Being burned by the spillage of hot components such as oil or acid from battery operated vehicles. Part B. There are a number of ways in which a driver who has not been properly trained might put the safety of persons in the workplace at risk. These include Unauthorized or incorrect use of a vehicle Operating in a restricted zone or exceeding the speed limit Overloading a vehicle or loading a forklift truck incorrectly Parking in unauthorized areas Taking refreshment, smoking or using a mobile phone whilst at the wheel Leaving the ignition key in an unattended vehicle Carrying out a reversing operation incorrectly. Carrying unauthorized passengers. An inability through incompetence to carry out routine checks of the vehicle and. A failure to report defects. Part C. Issues that need to be considered in this training includes. Operation of the vehicle's controls and ways to maneuver it safely both forward and in reverse. Information on the internal traffic routes and site rules including speed limits together with the signage and markings used. The specific workplace hazards such as restricted areas and the presence of hazardous materials. Parking restrictions in force and the method of parking the vehicle safely. 
the requirements for giving right of way to pedestrians and other vehicles, information on the safe working load of the vehicle and how to secure loads and stack them safely when unloading. Securing the vehicle after use and the procedures for key management. The precautions to be taken when refueling the vehicle. The need to carry out operational checks of the vehicle and the procedures for the reporting of defects and unsafe conditions. Health issues such as physical fitness and eyesight and the employee's legal duties as contained in relevant country legislation. External storage areas hazards. Identify possible hazards that could cause employees to be injured when walking through an external storage area of a workplace. The factors that may increase the risk of injury to employees who need to walk through the external storage area of a workplace including, answers were generally. The condition of the floors with the possible presence of potholes, loose coverings, oil and water. The presence of obstructions in the walkways. Changes in levels such as ramps, curbs or steps. A failure to provide barriers or fences round pits, voids or trenches. The possibility of being struck by moving vehicles or by loads falling from them because of a failure to segregate vehicles from pedestrians by the provision of suitable walkways. Objects projecting or falling from racking. A lack of housekeeping. A poor standard of lighting and inclement weather conditions. Construction Site, Traffic Route Controls A vehicle traffic route needs to be established on a construction site. Outline control measures to consider for a suitable and sufficient traffic route. Control measures that should be considered when establishing suitable vehicle traffic routes on a construction site include The provision and maintenance of well-constructed roadways with adequate drainage, and appropriate for the type and number of vehicles using them Ensuring that the number of steep gradients and tight bends are kept to a minimum the routes are kept clear of obstructions such as overhead cables. The physical separation of pedestrians from site traffic areas by the provision of walkways. The introduction of designated crossing points. The elimination of reversing maneuvers by the introduction of a one-way system. Providing turning circles using banksmen where required. The provision of designated areas for loading, sheeting and unloading. The provision of a good standard of lighting. The introduction, monitoring and enforcement of speed limits. The provision of clear signage indicating the right of way. Demolition work, main hazards. Identify the main hazards that may be present during the demolition of a building. The main hazards associated with the demolition of a building include Falls from a height or on the same level Falling debris and premature collapse of the structure. Use of explosives. Contact with and noise from equipment and heavy plant. Dust possibly including asbestos. Manual handling. 
the presence of hazardous materials from previous uses of the building. The presence of cellars or vaults affecting the stability of structures and adjoining premises. The presence of storage tanks both above and below ground, and their current or previous contents. The possible presence of services such as electricity, gas and water. Hot work. Biological hazards from the presence of stagnant water and vermin. Demolition work. Considerations. Describe what factors should be considered before a demolition project commences. Location and disconnection of public utilities such as gas, water electricity. Legal considerations that is ownership and local authority regulations, neighbors and the effects of localized nuisance, dust, noise, sound, of the work. Obtain building plans to determine any critical factors that is supporting walls and structures. Assess soil structure to allow safe vehicle movement. Identify any likely contaminants or contaminated land that is asbestos, dangerous substances, etc. Competency of contractors undertaking the work. Communication, consultation and cooperation between the persons undertaking and or coordinating the work. Degree of supervision required. Training in any specific aspects that may be particular to the demolition project being undertaken.